Now there's obvious benefits to the kind of breath I had at Augustana that played into what happened later on. One was the language requirement. Uh, Augustana had a language requirement, six credits in a language. I did a, I had high school French, so I was able to take a real university, first year university French course with Madame Spencer. Madame Spencer still here? Yes. Um, and boy, did that ever course teach me about translation and grammar and all the things I needed to the point where I passed every language exam I had to do at the graduate level from there on. That's all I needed was that one course here. And it meant that I didn't have to do a bunch of other catch-up courses for languages later on. Of course, in Canadian history, you need to be able to speak French. And any kind of a history degree afterwards, they would usually expect a second language, even if you're doing British history and not having to read other kinds of sources. And John's not always had, because he's been through this um, um, a couple times. Now, why shouldn't we at a university allow freedom of inquiry? Why shouldn't we allow freedom to choose? That's what the university is all about, right? But I think that that perspective misses the point of breadth requirements. Breadth forces you to open doors and to keep them open longer. It doesn't allow you to close those doors too early, before you've really gotten into deciding what it is you want to do, before you really understand what it is that you're good at. Specialization is so tempting, it's so sexy, you know what you want, you're going to go there, you're going to do it, at least you think you do. I don't know about what uh, Augustana is like, 70% of Carleton students change their major in the first year. 70%. Now, I was lucky, I, was, I came in as a history degree, I had three history degrees in a row, without a break, I never kind of wavered from history. But boy, did I waver a lot within history while I was doing it. But the thing about breadth is that it gets you the illusion that you can tackle anything. It gives you the idea that you can maybe have mobility and move into new areas of research. And so that's what I did, is that basically I started my own sort of self-directed study of medical history and the history of the body in the context of the 19th and 20th century. I had no training in it, I had no courses in it, nobody at Carleton was actually doing much on it because the University of Ottawa was where you know, the history of, of medicine was really located. But I had the experience of kind of starting over in new areas, and so it didn't seem all that daunting, although it probably should have. <laughs> and so eventually the dissertation came out, and I had the good fortune of having a real medical historian as my external advisor who loved the book. Uh, I loved the dissertation which became the book. And then a few years later, um, I guess five years, it seems too long, but five years after the degree, finally the, it comes out in book form in The Lord for the Body. And the book was awarded uh, a couple of distinctions of the American Society of Church History gave an award. But it also won the Jason A. Hanna Medal for the best book in medical history in Canada from the Royal Society of Canada. So, I think you, you know, they want to try to say this. Breath lets, lets you think big, it lets you be ambitious, it lets you find a place for your work in the field. But the other side of breath that I've hinted at before is teaching. So the best thing about my career though as an educator is that I have always been ending up teaching a wide variety of courses outside of Canadian history. I could have retreated into that specialty a long time ago, once I started teaching more full time, once I had my own uh, job, but I've just learned too much by teaching outside those areas, by trying to stay current in those areas. Um, I learned too much about what's going on in Canada by what's going on outside of Canada. So breadth not only keeps the doors open for you, it allows you to break into new doors, develop new patterns. If you get into a degree that lets you specialize too soon, it can feel a bit claustrophobic. I feel that you have to stay in that area, that you have to keep building on those platform shoes. Now there's no way, of course, to predict what the markets and the jobs are going to be like when you get done, no matter which direction the degree takes you. But it's kind of like trying to make a topographical map of sand dunes, right? Every storm <laughs> rearranges it. And if you walk in the sand, or I guess it's more appropriate, if you walk in snow with small feet, doesn't matter how high those heels are, right? You're just going to sink. But if you have <laughs> breadth, you can see where I'm going with this analogy. <laughs> if you've got a snowshoe on your foot, you can keep moving, right? It gives you that mobility. And of course, if you're really caught in a sandstorm or a snowstorm and you have 20 minutes to get out alive, then it's good I had that fourth year of course, after all. <laughs> Thank you very much.